Welcome into this Photoshop in 30 seconds tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where today we're going to talk about color grading with what's called a color lookup table. Um, this is actually a technique that's been used by video uh, color graders for some time, but Photoshop is progressively making it easier and easier and easier to use this type of technique on still imagery. So here's how it works. First, you need an image. So you open up your image, right? I'm just gonna get rid of all the other layers except this layer. This is the image out of camera after I've done a little tweaking in the camera raw editor. I brought it into Photoshop. I've sorted out all of my toning, everything that I want my file to look like, and it's all a bunch of adjustment layers with masks that have not been used. So that's the, these are important elements for your color lookup table. You use adjustment layers that have not been masked, and you need to have a background layer that's locked and set as your background layer. Quick tip actually, let's say you're using uh, a, uh, a document that has no background layer and you're like, well, I can't do a color lookup table. You can just simply select that layer, make sure it's rasterized, not a smart object, nothing like that. You can go layer and you can choose, where is it here? Oh, new background from layer and boom, you get that perfect locked background layer, uh, which you need for this effect. So once you have all of this, we can go file, export and choose export color lookup tables. It's going to say, hey, give it a description. Uh, we can just name it. It's just going to have the name of our PSD. That's fine for now. I don't really care about that. We don't need to go to maximum. In fact, maximum is pretty glitchy in Photoshop. I've noticed that medium and high are really, really good for virtually everything. So we'll go medium. It's going to give us 32 grid points. That's great. I'm going to just use the 3DL format, not cube. Uh, actually, I'm going to go with cube instead. Cube gives me a couple additional options. I'm going to roll with cube. 3DL, I believe, is the smallest file size. Um, but I'm going to roll with cube right now. Hit OK, and it's going to ask us where we'd like to save this .lut file, which it's, it's actually not going to end up being a .lut file, if I recall correctly. And we're going to call this grading, uh, just as in color grading. So we're going to save that to the desktop. Great. This becomes useful. This doesn't copy things like dodging and burning and little elements, blemishes that have been retouched and, and you know, healed out of an image. It doesn't do that. This is a great technique for copying when you've got like a whole series of toning for your image down. Maybe this is a last step to a series of images you're retouching and you figure out the toning in one image and you want to copy it to a bunch of other images. Of course, you can just copy over all the adjustment layers, but what if there's a faster, better way to do it? And this is where color lookup tables come into play. Let's go over to another image that was shot on the same day, same location. It's this image here, just with no toning. Check this out. We can go under adjustment layer and choose color lookup, right? Have you ever noticed that before? We're going to load a 3D LUT file. We're going to choose load. Notice, by the way, there's a bunch of other presets in here. Kind of interesting. Just hit load. And we're going to choose the grading.cube file. Hit OK or hit open. And you can see in one compact adjustment layer, it's applied all of those colors to this image. Now, we can change both data order and table order. This is why I like to go with .cube. We can kind of mess around with this. Instead of RGB, we can go with BGR, and it gives us like weird blue skin and everything. But if we change the table order as well to RGB, we actually get a very different, very muted, kind of like kicky in the teeth, grungy, punchy effect, which is not like super blown out in high contrast. It's very interesting. So just know you have, you have some additional options there. We're going to go with what we originally expected. And this layer, this adjustment layer works like any other adjustment layer. We can set, you know, blend modes, opacity, everything like that. So let's take a closer look at this. With these adjustment layers, remember, you want no layer mask. I mean, just a blank layer mask. It needs to be showing through. But you can do things like you can see here with this black-white adjustment layer. I have it set to the blend mode of multiply, and I even have the opacity reduced. So you can go in here, soft light, opacity of 30%. You can play around with these adjustment layers using uh, blend modes and opacity and fill adjustment, and that stuff gets copied into your uh, color lookup table. So if you're working on a series of images, you want to tone them all the same instead of having a bunch of adjustment layers, you can have one simple color lookup file and boom, apply those same effects. Now, what happens if we have a totally different image and we want to just see what happens with that color lookup table? Well, you can do that as well. Color lookup table, we can load that file. We can go with grading.cube, uh, open, and you can see we get this like totally different effect on this image. In fact, we can try flipping the data order and the table order and see what that does. There we have an even different effect. So you can really mess around with your color lookup tables and do a lot of really cool color grading and just all kinds of stuff. And like nobody uses them. It's a very underutilized feature in Photoshop. So it's just kind of touching the tip of the iceberg, getting you started with color lookup tables. But 
play around with them. If you have any advice for people who are new to color lookup tables, leave a comment under this video. I'm sure somebody will appreciate it. Heck, I'll appreciate it. I just think they're really cool and they can be really, really useful and fast for doing all kinds of different adjustments in Photoshop. So for color grading with color lookup tables in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com, and I'll catch you in the next one.